All right, welcome back to probabilities. Today we're going to be talking about conditional probabilities and the general multiplication rule. Last time we talked about how to find probabilities given a table. And now today we're going to actually make our own table. All right, so situations where we have more than one event occurring, okay, um, we, again, the multiplication rule is that if you have independent events, then we will multiply the probabilities, okay? So these are reminders from before. Uh, dependent events, example of a dependent event, okay? Again, we don't want to confuse independence with disjointness. We talked about this, or disjointedness. So again, disjoint has to do with shared outcomes, simultaneous events, where independence involves the probability of the outcomes, and whether or not one affects the probability of the other. Okay, with a Venn diagram, we can't picture independence here. So what we'll do sometimes is use a contingency table. All right. So use the general multiplication rule. The probability of A given B has occurred. Looks like this. Probability of A, B given A, excuse me. Probability of, no, that's probability of B given A has occurred. Uh, the probability of one event and occurring and the next occurring is the probability of the first event A times the probability of B given A. Now what that says then is if we're trying to calculate the probability of the conditional event this is what we call conditional probability uh, B given A this is going to be the probability of A and B over the probability of A. So that's the rule that we're going to use for conditional uh, probability. Now, when, <clears throat> when we have independent events, note that the probability of the second event is the same as the conditional probability. So, for example, if we are doing <laughs> the probability of, let's say, um, getting heads on the toss of a coin and getting a queen when we're selecting... Um, you know, a card from a stack of cards. The probability of selecting a queen, given that we got heads when we flipped the coin, is the same as the probability of selecting a queen. So that's an example of what we're talking about here. So the general multiplication rule helps to clarify the meaning of dependent events. So again, for conditional probability, we know that event A has occurred. Since A is a given, it changes the range of possible outcomes. Therefore, it changes our sample space here. So again, the formula, note that that formula came from basically dividing both sides by probability of A from the original formula. If we go back to the other slide, the original formula was that the, prob the probability of both events is the probability of the first times the conditional probability of the second. So if we literally took that equation and if we divided both sides by probability of A, then we have the formula here. So it's an algebraic thing that we've done. <laughs> Anyway, um, what we're going to do is we're going to apply this formula, okay? We're going to apply this formula. So, car sales, all right. So what we have here is domestic, created in the United States, imported from another country, and then total, trucks, cars, and then total. So the 15% here means that 15% of the cars, 15% of the vehicles were imported cars, right? 52% of the vehicles were trucks. 77% of the vehicles were domestic, and so on. Okay, so let me erase these notes. All right, so if we're finding the probability that a given vehicle is a truck, we can use the general addition rule. So if we're looking for probability that it's a truck, um, that's going to be the answer, okay? But we can use the general addition rule. We can say it's the probability that it's a domestic truck, 
plus the probability that it's an imported truck. 44 plus 8 is 52 percent right there. Okay, 52 percent. If we are then told that the given vehicle is imported, we adjust our probability. So if we tell you that it's imported, those, that's these vehicles. And then if I say, what's the probability that it's a truck, given that we know it's an imported vehicle? So we no longer, we no longer just look at this number, right? We're looking at the total percentage of imported vehicles. Okay, so using the conditional probability rule, we can say that it's the probability that it's an imported truck, which is the 8%, divided by the probability of all imported vehicles, which is 23%. So 8% divided by 23% is 8 out of 23. So whatever that is as a percentage. So that would be 8 divided by 23 or 34.8%. Okay? Or approximately 35%. <clears throat> now, same information. What is the probability that a randomly chosen vehicle is imported given that it is a truck? So, that would be I given T. Notice that's not the same thing as T given I, which is what we just calculated. So given that it is a truck, those are all the trucks, what is the probability that's imported, right? So given that it's a truck, total of 52% imported, that would be the probability of T and I, which is the same as what we said earlier was I and T, but this time we're going to divide by the probability of a truck instead of probability of imported. So instead of dividing the 0 0.08 by 23, we're dividing the 0 0.08 by 52%. So 8 out of 52. So 8 divided by 52 is 15.4%. Okay. So 15.4% is the probability that it's imported given that we know it's a truck. That's how we use the contingency table there. Okay. So here's another question. What is the probability that the vehicle is a car given that it's domestic? Right. So we take the total domestic cars, domestic vehicles, excuse me, and we divide the cars by that. So it would be 33 77 Thirty-three seventy-sevenths should come out to forty-two eighty-five point forty-two eighty-five. Thirty-three seventy-sevenths. There it is. Forty-two eighty. Actually, it's forty-two eighty-six. So the the rounding is a little off on that one. Okay. Domestic, given that it's a car, would be. So given that it's a car, those are, let me let me erase. Um, let me erase this. So it's getting a little messy. All right. So given that it's a car, we want domestic. So that would be 33 out of 48 percent, or 33 out of 48 point 68.75. So let's try 38 out of 33 out of 48. There it is. So 68.75 Okay, so <clears throat> now in some cases we're going to be given something like this and we have to create our own contingency table. So given the probability of an event is 49%, the probability of another event is 26%, the probability of both of them occurring together is 25, we want to find the probability that the second event occurred given that the first one did not. Now this is going to be kind of hard, uh, even if we try to use a Venn diagram. So a, contin a contingency table works much better for this. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do to do that is complete a table. So this table is going to have the probability of the event A as the first row probability of not A in the second row, B for the first column, not B for the second column, and then the totals. Okay, 
So what we need to do is fill in what we're given. So remember that the probability of A is 49%. So that is not this, and that's not it's not this one, and it's not this one, but it's that one. So that's 49%. The probability of B is 26%. So I put that there. The probability of A and B is 25%, which is right there. Then I can fill in the rest. So this is almost like a Sudoku puzzle. Okay, so remember that these are totals. So I can subtract this minus this to get this one. I can subtract this minus the 0.25 to get this one, 1%. And if the probability of B is 26%, then the probability of not B is going to be 1 minus that from the complement rule. If the probability of A is 49%, then the probability of not A is going to be 51. And remember, the total is always going to be 1. Okay. Then I could subtract this minus this to, to get 50%. So then this plus that should be that, which it is. Okay. So now we have the whole kit and caboodle, so to speak. All right, so then we can answer the question, which is, you know, so we filled in what we were given, we filled in what we can figure out, and now we're going to answer the question. So the probability of B given not A. So once again, remember that the probability of, let's, let's use X's and Y's just so we don't get too confused. X probability of x given y is the probability of x and y divided by the probability of y. Okay, So this is going to be the probability of b and not a divided by the probability of not a. So now all we have to do is just find the numerator number in this table. Oops. And then we have to find the denominator number as well. So the probability of B and not A would be B and not A. So the intersection of those two numbers is 1%. So the numerator is 1%. And the denominator is the probability of not A, which is 51%. So that's the same as 1 divided by 51. Which is... Approximately 1.96%. So about 2%. There it is. Okay. So that's how we can use this contingency table to help us figure out the answer to this question here. And that concludes the video for today.